Welcome back, Victoria. Very nice, ha- very nice having you back on the show. Thank you, Bob. Nice to be here. But let, let's assume that you, you win the mayoral race. You become the mayor of the city of Biddeford. What will be the first couple of things that you say, this is what I want to have done. This is what I want to take. This is what I want to try, try and accomplish. Yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy that you asked that because I certainly have some priorities. Um, the first thing that I think that we really must have as a city is a comprehensive plan. And we haven't had an updated comp plan since 1999. During the past 10 years, at least, we've seen all of this development happening in Biddeford, and we haven't really had a deliberate process and a plan to work from as we welcome that new development to town. So comp plan, number one priority. Second priority is that deliberate process. How do we evaluate opportunities that come to the city, and how do we make sure that they're in alignment with what the community has told us they want and what the community needs? And of course, all of that comes back to that comp plan, because the comprehensive plan is the document that shapes what the city looks like in the next number of years. And then the community input piece. We've come a long way with regard to community input in Biddeford, with the way that we reach out to the public, with the way that we let people know what's going on. But I think we have more work to do there. And one of my priorities is to make it as easy as possible for any citizen in Biddeford to participate in local government and share their perspectives if they want to do that. So that might look like, um, you know, considering the way that we offer public input opportunities in the process of things, making sure it's meaningful, not just at the end after almost everything has been decided. It might look like town hall forums where counselors and the mayor go out into the community to talk to people and not just expect them always to come to city hall, come to us as it were. Um, But those are the top three things that are on my agenda. The comprehensive plan, a deliberate process that we can use to evaluate the decisions before us and making sure the community has an opportunity to give their input. Yeah. Now, Biddeford is a seaside community. And, you know, I, I don't live in Biddeford. I live in Kenny Bunk. And Kenny Bunk is, is also a seaside community. And, but one of, the, one of the issues in Kenny Bunk seems to be lobstering. Hmm. The, 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 the restrictions that... that the, that the federal government has put on fishing and so forth has significantly impacted the lobstering industry. Do you, do, you, do you see concerns in that regard relative to Biddeford? If well, that makes sense. It does make sense. And I think that's a, it's a good question. It's really a state issue at this point. And I know that the state and especially the Speaker of the House, Ryan Fecto, who of course is from the beautiful city of Biddeford, um, has raised concerns about those federal regulations as they impact Maine lobstermen and women. And so I think it's certainly anytime someone's livelihood is threatened, that's a concern. At the same time, Is the environment and protection of endangered species a concern? Of course, but I think there are ways for uh, the delegation at the state level to have conversations with our federal delegation to make sure that we are balancing those concerns um, and not taking too much from folks who are just trying to make a living. Yep. Do you see an issue relative to drugs in the city of Biddeford? A significant issue. I think I think drugs are always going to be an issue. Are always going to be an issue. The only degree, the only change will be the degree to which they are. And when it, when I read that pot was going to be a major issue in the, for the main municipal main municipalities, I don't necessarily see it, but I'm not that connected with it in Biddeford. What are your thoughts? In what sense do you mean a problem for the municipalities, Bob? Do you mean a, par- a problem with regard to hot, zoning? Hot and the uh, pandemic were the two major, the two major things that the, the Biddeford Daily News pointed out as being areas of concern. I, I could certainly see the pandemic. I mean, that's obvious. You can't get you can't get off you can't get on television without hearing about the pandemic. Uh, I don't see it. But I, I'm not necessarily involved that involved in the in the bit of a community. I don't see it relative relative to pot, and that's the that's the one that loses me. I I just don't see it. Is there something that's going on that I don't see? I don't I don't think so, Bob. I mean, I know that in January the city council talked about 
um, ordinances around adult use marijuana yeah. growing facilities. And at that time determined there were certain areas of the city where those facilities would be allowed. Um, adult use recreational marijuana stores are not permitted in Biddeford to my knowledge. And I know there are other communities across the state that have made that same choice. So they've opted to allow for grow operations for, for businesses that do the cultivation of marijuana but have chosen not to allow the retail store aspect in their communities. So certainly, um, certainly from that perspective, I could see that that's one, that's a choice that every community has to make. Um, and I also agree with you, you know, the pandemic is a continuing issue, not only for municipalities, but for all of us. And so that's clearly another issue that's really facing our I would, I would, I would venture to say it's a universal issue. Yeah relative to the state of Maine and relative to any state. I'm gonna I'm gonna put the offer out there. I, I would love to have you as a guest on a on a regular basis. You you're a great guest. You were a great guest you were a great guest the first time I had you on as a guest. Thank you. And you repeated And that was back when I was running for state representative, I think that was the last time I was a guest on your show That's right. before I before That's I served exactly in right. Augusta representing Biddeford. That's right. And then I then I had the opportunity to see you with, to see you with, you see you in action on the, the, the committee that you were on. Yeah. You were, you were involved with insurance and financial services. And which healthcare. Was, which was my bailiwick at the time. Yes. yes. That was a great committee to serve on. You know, healthcare access, as you know from our last interview together, that is a huge area for me, making sure folks can access healthcare. And so serving on that committee was very rewarding. Um, yeah. And I, I really enjoyed all of the bipartisan work that we did in that committee. It was it was very I, I, interesting. I, I very much enjoyed the times that I that I was able to get there to to observe the goings on. I found that committee to be ex, ex, very very good, very congenial, mm -hmm. but of and and effective. It was effectively run, uh, and I enjoyed it. What what do you have on your agenda for things to accomplish? For the city of Biddeford in the very near future? Mm. Well, you know, in addition to finishing the comprehensive plan, I think that, you know, when I think about, <clears throat> pardon me, a comprehensive plan, I think about a living document because things change. As we've seen in Biddeford, things can change very rapidly. So the comprehensive plan, when it's finished, doesn't need to sit on a shelf. It needs to be an active document that we work on as a community. And so that's, you know, one of the pieces I'd like to accomplish is making sure that we're really keeping up with that comprehensive plan and making it reflective of what the community wants. Uh, other areas that are priority for me are affordability of the city. And that means for everybody from folks who've lived here their whole lives and who are worried about their property tax burden to folks who are moving here, who are working families, who struggle to find affordable rental units or affordable homes to buy. Um, addressing the affordability concern that we have and, and the lack of housing stock that's available that we have, both of those things need to happen in order for us to continue to prosper as a city. If people can't afford to live here, then very quickly we're going to see a lot of the special characters that, special characteristics rather, pardon me, um, of the city that we love so much are going to change. And change is inevitable, but I think we can do things to mitigate the change and make sure that Biddeford remains attainable for everyone. What would be your, 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 your concluding comment for this show? I, I wanna say thank you to you for having me and thank you to your viewers for watching and learning a little bit more about me. I'm excited about the opportunity to share kind of my vision for what I would like to do as mayor. And I have really an open, an open door to hear from the community. That's one of the things that's most important to me. So I would encourage anyone who's watching, who's curious well, to learn well, more wait. to reach out. Absentee ballots and voting are available right now. It's important for everyone to know that they can request an absentee ballot or they can vote early at City Hall or they can vote on November 2nd at the Tiger Gym. So I would encourage everyone who is registered to vote in not just Biddeford, but wherever you might be watching from, to make sure that you get out to vote on November 2nd, or you get your absentee ballot and cast your vote before then. Um, it's just most important that everyone participates in our elections and, and casts a vote. So that there's my plug for voting.
Well, you know, voting. Now, I, I you might say I'm an old timer, but but voting just seemed to be something that people did. Yeah, and, and they they did it without without bluster. They did it without issues. These days, it seems like every time there's a vote, every time there's an election, there are all there are a host of issues wrapped around that election, which had nothing at all to do with the election itself. It has to do with registration, and I never I never found it difficulty to to register to vote. Now, all the, now these days, every time you you talk about registration, voting, you get problems. Well, okay. not in Biddeford, Bob. I will say that uh, City Clerk Carmen Morris of Biddeford runs an extremely tight ship. She is on the mark all the time, and her team is phenomenal. So they would be happy to assist anybody at City Hall with early voting or registration or anything like that. And I know that they'll be happy to see folks on November 2nd. I think I think my reference, my personal reference on that is more, more akin to the national level. I see, yeah. Level. We do hear a lot of things in the news. Nationally, there's, there's constant bickering going on mm -hmm. relative to elections. Thank you very much for being a guest. I look forward to the next opportunity to have you on as a guest. And I will be in touch. Thank you very much for having Thank me. I really much. enjoyed it. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye now.